Hello again and welcome everybody to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2 IC and uh, I do want to thank everybody. We had a really fun live stream on Wednesday. Uh, not sure when this one's going to come out, hopefully Thursday. But uh, I implore you, if, if this is your first time watching this channel, uh, hang out with us. Try and, and, and come out on a Wednesday at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, adjust for, accordingly for your time zone. It is a one hour, somewhat of a live Q&A, but pr pretty much anything goes to where uh, questions, comments, concern. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of us uh, like-minded individuals that's coming together, fellowship, doing a uh, discussion and whatnot. And uh, it, it was it was really, really fun last night. Uh, and to uh, that extent, I did want to answer a question. I had a few of you uh, reach out to me after the live stream and was asking about uh, the zoo trip and what was the solar thing that I took. And uh, it was actually this right here. Um, this actually, there's clips, so it all holds together. Uh, it does come with these uh, carabiner clips. It does come with a pocket so you can do your charging cables or whatnot. But when you undo it, then it folds out into this. So you have four solar panels. I took these carabiners right here and put it on the back of my backpack. Uh, here is where it plugs in. And so uh, I had a cable and uh, hooked it up to my phone and it did a, uh, a, a pretty good job. Um, you know, it, it for what it was, I was thoroughly impressed just because uh, it was a, a very dreary day. It wasn't full on sun and uh, it, it kept my phone pretty well decently charged. I only lost about 30% of power, uh, you know, so far all day long. So uh, I will definitely put that down as a pass. Uh, I don't remember where I got that. So I do apologize. You're going to have to shop around. I'm sure you can probably get them off of Amazon or anywhere like that. Uh, but uh, I, I, it's one of the things, uh, yeah, I want to take it. I wanted to battle test it. Uh, it, it survived getting wet. It survived, uh, you know, being cold. Uh, the warmest it got was like 40 something degrees. Uh, so it, it did a really, really good job. Um, still works. Uh, you know, I tested it out the very next day and, uh, put it outside and, you know, light turned on, started charging things. So I, I give the pass. So, uh, but let's move on to today's topic. And one of the things that I want to discuss in this is going to be trust. Now, when we talk about trust, a lot of people, uh, I, I would have to assume, start going trust in one another. And and yes, okay, when we start talking about trust, it is a personal trust. And it's your trust usually on how much you trust somebody else. And while that is important, uh, it also, there's a lot of ways to branch out into this. And this is where I wanted to steer this conversation and I want to get you thinking. And so when it comes to trust, you have to be trustworthy as well. And there's a lot to be said. And so when you start looking at how you trust other people, are you trusting them by what they say? Are you trusting them by what they do, the fruits of their labors, their actions? Are you trusting them by what they do in front of you? Or are you doing it from uh, observation from a distance? Now, are you taking the uh, words from other trusted in individuals? Maybe you are not around and uh, somebody that you trust comes up and, and tells you what, uh, you know, somebody else did. Now you are doing a trust battle. Who do you trust over top of the other? Uh, do you? Do you call them out? Do you, is it a situation to where... Uh, you know, everybody needs to sit down and, and figure out what actually happened. Uh, there's a lot when it comes to trust. Trust for a lot of people is built very, very slowly over a, a, a pretty decent amount of time. Uh, you can have a certain level of trust right when you meet somebody. You can have a gut instinct that, you know, uh, this, this person's coming off real well or they were recommended by somebody that you fully trust. Uh, you know, and, and they can start out with a pretty high level. Uh, some people, you know, you're a little weary. Um, they haven't done anything that, that, you know, so far that would make you not trust them. And, uh, you know, so some people start out kind of up here, some people down here. 
uh, and you have certain ones. Uh, when we do, when it comes to trust, trust can be broken, um, and it's not always a burn the bridge type of of thing. Maybe it's something small and insignificant uh, to where, yeah, you know, it was a little lie that was told. But it's that same thing. If you're willing to lie about something small and insignificant, what else are you willing to lie about? And we all know uh, pretty much everybody lies at some point in time. Uh, and, and you can justify it however you want. Uh, does your significant other ask you if you're, or if they look good in a pair of jeans? Uh, pick your battles, right? Uh, yes, you look great, you know. Uh, certain people no you're going to tell the truth uh, actually we just kind of did this not too long ago with mrs rural uh she had some jeans she tried a couple on okay good good and, and then i made a face on one of them and uh couldn't back out of it then and uh she asked me no wh what what's your honest opinion and i was like eh, they they don't look right uh you know and it's pick the battle sort of thing uh but you have to kind of figure out where your red lines are. Some things that are done is a burn the bridge. It, you cannot earn the trust back. Once you've crossed that line, it is done. Uh, certain things you need time to heal and to reflect and to, um, you know, get over what was ever done and, and you know, see if that, that can be mended, if that trust level can start from, you know, square one and over time can do it. People do make mistakes, okay? We're, we're human. We're going to uh, make a bad judgment call. Uh, we're going to do something based off of emotion, uh, something off of opportunity. Uh, you know, th there's all sorts of different things where people are going to make mistakes. And there's different levels on different people on when it comes to trust. Some people, uh, you get one strike and you're out. Uh, others, uh, you get multiple strikes and you're out who's right and who's wrong. You know, uh, I'm probably somewhere in the middle, depending on the situation. I want to know what was done. Uh, you know, what was it done out of anger out of, you know, some sort of emotion? Was it, uh, something to where you were just really, really hungry. And then, you know, you knew one of my apples was there and it's just a crime of opportunity. Uh, you know, what is it? And so, I think things have to go by a case by case basis in the most part. But again, this is my opinion on this. And then I want you to start formulating things for yourself. Where does your trust levels lie? How is it that you judge others and you, you see how they do, how they talk, how they, they walk, how their actions are, how they are in front of you and how they are away from you. How do you do that? Is that same across the board? Do you have a, a checklist that you go down or is it uh, an individual thing? Does things make it to where, uh, you know, certain people get something a little different? Maybe for guys, is it something to where you automatically trust guys, you know, more than you would trust uh, a woman? It's vice versa, you know, women, do you trust women more than you trust a, a random guy? Uh, maybe it's something on looks. Wow, she looks good or he looks good. They automatically get trust. You're, you're going off of an emotion. You know, are you making the best decision? And when you start thinking about that, now you have to stop and you have to think, if somebody's doing that to me, how well am I doing for trust? When I speak, do I stop and think things through? Uh, my actions, was that joke something to where somebody's going to overhear it? And, uh, you know, did I, did I lose a point or two? Not saying that you're bending your will or changing who you are to conform to fit somebody, but it's, it's one of those to where you have different personalities. People have different backgrounds, uh, different levels of, of humor and, and all sorts of things. It's what makes us great, right? It's that diversity of, uh, you know, some of us are rough and tumble. Other people are more sensitive, uh, some people like, you know, uh, to joke around and, and horseplay. Uh, others are more of a serious type. And to come together and to be able to interact and coexist is, is a wonderful, beautiful thing. And so it's, it's also about respect, you know. Um, just because uh, somebody is willing to put up with something doesn't necessarily mean that they should. And it, it's the respectful thing to... 
uh, be able to, uh, you know, have that negotiation part. Just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean that you always have to do that. Um, you know, smoking is one of the things. Uh, for me, back when I was actually smoking cigarettes, just because I was outside and uh, I was in a, a free area that you could smoke didn't mean that I just lit up whenever I wanted to. Uh, but that's a personal decision. I was uh, respectful for those that are around me. Some people do not like the smell. Some people uh, don't want secondhand smoke. They don't want the smell in their clothes. And I get it. You know, I, and I was always tried to be respectful of that. Uh, it was never a thing of somebody came and, and told me, absolutely not, you're banned, you can't do that. Uh, it was my choice, my decision. And so I always would step away. I would, you know, make it to where... Uh, just because I, I could didn't mean that I, I went and did it on, you know, just to, to flex my muscle. Look at me. Look what I can do. I have freedom. Uh, no, there there's a certain, uh, I believe in my opinion, there's a certain level of being respectful that just because that freedom is there doesn't mean you have to exercise it to the fullest extent. Uh, but when it comes to other things of trust, it, it's more than I think just people. OK, it, it's how well do you trust the situation? How well do you trust um, uh, animals or, or pets or things like that? Uh, that's one of the biggest things I think that a lot of people take for granted. Uh, you know, we've had this dog as a puppy. I, I fully trust him. You know, he's never done anything. OK, but what happens when that dog becomes scared, when that dog becomes extremely hungry, um, it gets sick, it gets injured, anything along those lines, it gets elderly, uh, you know, things change. And uh, I'm curious on a lot of people, have you thought about that? You have that level of trust. You've built that, that relationship with that animal since it was a couple of weeks or months old. And uh, it's been in your family for eight, nine, 12 years, and it's never done anything. It's never made you question. It doesn't mean that someday something can happen. Something can change to where uh, suddenly it becomes vicious. Suddenly it snaps. Suddenly, you know, it does something to where, uh, you know, it's out of the norm. Uh, and it's one of the things I want people to, to, to think about. Uh, I know that pets uh, can be extremely important. You know, that's where the term fur baby comes from, right? And so uh, a lot of people, they prep for their, their pets. They want to make sure that they have food, water, leashes, medication, you know, the different things to take care of your animal. Are you prepared to make sure that you are gauging that trust level? You are watching your pet to make sure that, you know, you, yourself, your pet, and everybody else around you is, is safe, that nothing is changing, that the situation is, is still good and everything is fine. Uh, and, and you cannot have a blind trust, okay? You can't have it to where uh, I've known this person or I've known this pet for so long just because I have known them and I have this high level of trust doesn't mean that when you put somebody in an extreme situation, suddenly things have changed. Okay. Uh, they're no longer that same animal or that same person. Uh, they're going to act out on emotion, on anger, on hunger, on all sorts of things like that. And I want you to be aware of that. Uh, how well do you trust yourself when it comes down to, uh, is this water safe and drinkable? Uh, there's a lot of people, and I know I need to do more water episodes, trust me, uh, when it comes to this. The, the, this is huge when it comes to new preppers. When you are into a SHTF situation, a lot of people that are new, they will take and they will go buy a, a Sawyer Mini or a Life Straw or something like that. And that is wonderful. Those are great, great products. I'm not putting them down in any way, shape, or form. I have some, okay? And I've, I've used them many a times. But the thing is, though, is they are not what a lot of people think they are. They are not a one fits all. They are used to filter out like stream water or something along those lines. They are not for like flood waters. Okay. You cannot take and have a huge massive flood in your area to where uh, you've got three, four feet of water all around you, uh, you know, up in your home and everything else. Uh, and, and pull out one of those, those, uh, water filtering straws and, and just drink out of it. It doesn't work that way. They're not designed for it. They're not supposed to. They're not meant to. Think about everything that's in that water. Decomposing bodies of uh, maybe even people, but surely animals. Um, if it's up into your home, then it's up around vehicles. So you're having all sorts of 
uh, different oil, fuel, uh, coolant, antifreeze. Uh, you're, you're having all sorts of just uh, different things of rust and other uh, nasty particles of who knows what, uh, as well as, you know, uh, somebody didn't clean up out of their yard and they have animals. Now you have uh, animal fecal matter and all sorts of other things mixing all that together. Okay. You, when you have gasoline and antifreeze and, and, uh, you know, all sorts of the other things that we talked about all mixing together, those are not meant for that. Okay. And that's where, when we talk about water, that's a, a layered approach that is, you know, pre-filtering, filtering, uh, chemically treating UV light treating boiling. You, you are trying everything you can to get that water as safe as possible. Uh, but you know, that comes into it. Where is your level of trust when it comes to this? Where is it that in an SHTF situation, when it comes to food and water and, and all this other stuff, how well do you trust yourself to be able to execute not only your, your plan, but to be able to, uh, use the different things. And when we're talking about those, those different things, how well do you trust those tools? You know, how many people actually went out and bought one of those, uh, water filters and used it, you know, well, I don't want to use it because once you use it, you know, it's one of those things that you can't put it back and it's not brand new anymore. I get it. Uh, maybe you need to buy two of them, one to use. So you have an idea of how they function and, and how different water tastes and how it, it actually filters the water. Uh, and maybe you want a different brand. Maybe this one doesn't filter as well as that one. Now is the time to figure that out. All those people out there that you have went out and you bought different freeze dried, you bought uh, the different MREs and things like that. Uh, open them up. Just because you like uh, lasagna or beef stroganoff or mac and cheese or chili mac or whatever, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to like this brand or freeze-dried version of it or anything along those lines. You might want to get a pack or two before you spend the $100, two, $300 on a, on a monster bucket of it because you may not like it. There may be an ingredient in there that does not agree with your stomach and you do not want to be in an SHTF situation and you pull that out, you make it, you take a couple of bites and you're just like, mm, this was a bad idea. Now, not only did you waste a bunch of money, now that you already have to where you're already in a bad situation and now you just made it even worse. Now you have even less food and you, now because of all this, you went in with blind trust. You had it to where uh, you just assumed, and we all know what assuming does, right? So uh, hopefully, uh, when you you kind of get to the end of this, okay? So we're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up. When it comes down to all this, it's going to be trust on so many levels. You know, it's going to be trust on other people. It's going to be trust on animals and and, and pets and things like that. It's going to be trust on yourself, your instincts, your uh, reactions, your experience and all that. It's going to be trust in uh, everything that you have around you. Do you trust your structure to withstand hurricane force winds? Do you trust that you know what to do? Uh, you know, if, if some bad thing happens, if, if uh, you're sitting here watching me right now and all of a sudden a car veers off the road and hits your house, do you know what to do? Because that is more likely to happen than the zombie apocalypse. You know, where is your med kit? Where is your phone? Do you, are you going to spring up and run out there and, and try and uh, administer aid and, and get a grip on the situation and, and try and get help? Or are you going to be completely shocked or, or try and record what happened and then whatever? You know, you, it, when it comes to preparedness, it's preparing for a lot of things and it's very uh, difficult to uh, make it to where you, you pull back. You want to prepare for certain things, but you also don't want to be concrete about it. When it comes to preparedness, you want to have that flexibility because uh, we all know the best laid plans also always go awry. Nothing ever goes 100% to plan uh, for the most part. And so you want to make sure that you give yourself that flexibility. So that way you can, you can adapt to the situation. You need to try and get it to where you are fluid in the things that you are doing. So that way, if something comes to you uh, out of left field, you, you, you've got a direction and, and you can pivot and you can move over here and you can try something different. 
Uh, so that way you're not just stuck. You're not just reading out of a manual going A, B, C, and all of a sudden you get to uh, D and you're like, I don't know what to do now. Okay, no, this is where we pivot. This is where we improvise. This is where, uh, you know, just because we don't have a hammer and we need to hit a nail, what do we have around here that we can use as a hammer? What what can we do? What do we have? How do we fix this, this situation? Um, and, and it's that whole thing. How well do you trust yourself to where you have that experience on, on, you know, what's around you just because you have a medical kit, do you know, what's in there? Do you know how to use it? Do you know where everything's at? Just because you have a radio, do you know how to use it? Do you trust yourself that in a time of need that, you know, that it's completely charged up, you know how to turn it on and you know how it operates, who you're contacting. Do you trust the people that you're contacting that they're going to have their radio on, that, that they didn't freak out and forget they even had a radio in the first place. Uh, you may have a great plan to get all your stuff and contact them. Uh, they may be the stop part of your plan, okay? And, and you need to prepare for that, uh, that maybe you can't get a hold of them. And, and then what? What are you going to do? Uh, that may be one of those things of once you get a hold of them, uh, maybe they can't get to you or you can't get to them or you know whatever else. Uh, when it comes down to all this, when it comes down to trust, make sure just as you go through and, and you check your bags periodically, you check your plan periodically, uh, you run a couple of drills periodically, check your trust too. Check it in your, your group, check it in your family, check it in yourself, check it with your animals and pets, check it with your property, your building, your tools, all of that. It's a good thing to have a little bit of a check yourself moment. And it's a good thing to make sure that you're not just blindly trusting something. So uh, that's what I've got for you guys today. I've taken up enough of your time ranting and raving as it is. So uh, I want to thank you guys so much for spending a little bit of time with me. And, uh, you know, I hope that you guys got a little bit of something out of this. So if you uh, did, uh, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, the bell for notification and all that. And as a special thing, okay, because I've just now decided I'm going to release this on Thursday. So for tomorrow, for Friday, for October 18th and 19th, uh, there is a uh, precious metals auction. And I'm going to show you a thing here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, so that way you guys can uh, see what it is that uh, we are talking about. And is it that one? I don't think it is. Um, there it is right there. Okay. So this is Silver Oceans uh, right here. Click the subscribe button, but you go to YouTube and type in Silver Oceans. Uh, this right here is the preview video that he uh, does if you are on his email list. Uh, if you are interested into it, just uh, email him and say that you want on the list. Uh, he sends out one single email a month, so you will not be inundated with tons and tons of emails. Uh, but for those of you that are interested, that did hang out for a few more minutes, as, as I said, Friday and Saturday, 18th and 19th, this is 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern adjust for your time zones. You do not need to be a channel member to bid. He does flat rate $5 shipping no matter what you purchase. You purchase one thing or you purchase the whole auction, it's $5. And he does do an upgraded $7. He does accept PayPal and Venmo. Um, and, you know, you can go down through here and read all these, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward and whatnot. Uh, you know, on how he does it. He does a couple of insurance bids, minimum bids, things like that. Um, you know, talking about some other things, but uh, if you are interested in that, please go over there, uh, check his channel out, subscribe and try and get on the email list. But uh, there you go. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that I, I shared some of the things out because I try and attend every single month. I have gotten some really amazing, wonderful things from him. He is a, a good online friend. I haven't got the privilege to meeting him in person yet, but uh, I, I trust him and uh, I will at least stick my name on it. So, uh, but that's what I've got. I hope you guys have an amazing day. I hope you have a blessed day. Stay tuned because there's definitely more information to come. And with that, say it with me. Remember to remain united. We're all prepping in this together.